Benchweller. Today I'm talking about the Mabinogion. First of all, what is the Mabinogion? Because I'm only talking about one specific part of it today, so we need to understand which part of it we're talking about. And to understand which part of it we're talking about, we need to understand the whole. So the Mabinogion can be split roughly into two big categories. The Pedwakank. Or the four tales of the Mabinogi. And the other tales, there's several, like Kiva Kivelis, Kilhu Chakolwan, lots of others. And the Mabinogi are different from these very specifically because they are more Arlavar, um, spoken language. They're much more passed down like generation to generation, like a traditional story. And they each have the word Mabinogi at the end of them. We don't know what this word Mabinogi means. That Mabit, Mabin, it kind of suggests youth. So this may be some kind of residual idea, telling of the adventures of youth, meaning in earlier times. The one I'm mentioning today, Pushpendavid Devad, is the first of these. And what I'm going through to you today about these are the names of the major characters in these stories. This is the first one. If you want me to make more like the other three, Kank, Branches, let me know. And I will, depending on how this video goes. Some things to note that are important in understanding these names I'm about to tell you is these were fossilized in manuscript form around the year 1350. And they don't really change from that point. But that point in history is very important because Wales had just been physically conquered by the invaders from England. And Welsh people had intentionally gone out to save different forms of literature during this time. The poets of the princes, the native laws, lots of ecclesiastical elements, and several other bits here and there. And this was part of that period, gathering things together to preserve them so that the Welsh culture did not go extinct in the face of being conquered by this foreign power. And so the Mabinogi is kind of a rescue mission. You can see that it's broken a bit, like transferring a VHS tape into a modern video form. Some bits kind of got lost and distorted, but the kernel of it is there. It's very clear. You can see what these stories are. And the names are very indicative of what the original storytellers wanted us to think about these characters. There's often puns, jokes around their names. So for you to fully understand the story, you need to understand what their names mean. And these names are often connected vaguely to pre-Christian motifs. And these names show influence from this conquest period all the way back through the post-Roman period. And there's elements that come from before then. And I'm going to dare to say that some parts of these tales seem to come from the early Iron Age when the Bronze Age was ending. But it's very faint. It's difficult to say. And... We just don't know, but knowing the names of the characters and what they mean helps you understand what they mean. And this element of time is important. They begin, Trega Wife. Once upon a time. And Trega Wife means turning of time. So it's not a pawn like in English or Scots. It's very specific to Welsh in terms of how you express that, the turning of time. And in that turning of time, we come to Dved, Pwll Pendivig Dved. But first, I'm making this video because Griffith Morgan left this comment. Really enjoy your videos. I share some of them to my followers. Hey, thanks for sharing that. I really do appreciate it. It helps me get more views, so. This video is for you, man. At Blackmore Film on Twitter. Go check it out. Well, after the video. 
and on Facebook. Any chance of a video on the Mebanogion, my followers would really be into seeing one covering the subject. Okay, this is the first one of the names I want to show you here. Duved was the realm which he ruled over, and it basically encompasses the southwest of our country. Wales, of course. And Puig, that's his name, but it means, like, wit, prudent, cautious thinking. And that's interesting, a, a type of witty wisdom. The expression, Cumbuig, you'll hear people say. Cumbuig, take heed. Carry your wits about you. And that's how the story begins, this character. And Pendivig means that he was a noble prince. Penhead. Put Pendivig Deved. Wit of wisdom, chief, gentleman, king of Deved. And Deved comes from Demetai. That's the Latin form of the tribe which dominated the area pre and during Rome. And Push is on a hunting expedition, as gentlemen rulers do. And he runs into Arraun. That's an interesting name. In a meadow. And Arraun, we think, comes from Arubianis. And this was a, a deity of uh, a plowed field in Romania present-day Romania, you had a settlement, Arubium, and this deity was the deity of that local area. Today it's Machin. That's the town, the area. And that's very distant. But this deity was also present in southern Germany, Austria, Slovenia. And we know that Romans transported people to settle. And there was exchange all throughout the empire. But what's most interesting to me is that if this is some type of relation to the deity of a plowed field, the fact that Puig comes into contact with him in a field, even though that it's not plowed, it's more of a meadow, and that's explicitly stated. But over time, you have to remember these tales are very old, there's elements in them that are pre-Christian, pre-Roman even, but as Romans and Christians came in, it became distorted and characters were intentionally re-sculpted and elements shaded in and out to delude pagan aspects. And I wonder if this meeting him in a field is a folk memory of that god. Aron, and he's the king of Anuvan, the underworld, or Anun. Thiva, or F, got lost slowly over time. And he goes down with him, and he, Aron, is warring with another king of the underworld, Havgan. And this is interesting because that name is obviously either one of two things Ha, the summer. And Khan, meaning song, or Khan, meaning bleach white. We're not sure which one of those two it is. What I find interesting is that you have potentially this Aran being the ancient folk memory of this field god, doing battle with summer. There's a war between the field and the summer. And Puig comes to end this in the underworld, to settle this division between them. And Puig trades places with Aron and eventually Aron defeats Havgan through the Council of Puig. And this creates a lasting friendship between the kingdom of the underworld and Duved and Puig. The first true female figure that we see in these tales is Rhiannon, and she is the queen of Puig, his woman, his wife, and and her name clearly comes from Rhiann, maiden in 
Middle to Old Welsh. And this goes back even further to Brythonic and Celtic. But what do I mean by Middle Welsh? I mean the Welsh spoken from the 12th to 15th centuries. So that again is a fossilization. It had changed. And before this, back through Old Welsh into Brythonic, it was something like Rhychen. And further back into Celtic, it was a much harder G, clearer. We think it was Rigani. Rigani. This name for a queen. That's what it meant. And that's interesting. Her name literally means queen which became over time Maiden. Rhiannon's father is kind of Tyrant Father, which you'll find that theme quite frequent in Welsh storytelling. The hero wants to win the woman over, but there's a Tyrant Father that stands in the way. And her father's name, Hevith Hen, or Hevith Hen. And you hear and see both occasionally, and that's important. The second element, hen, means old. And it is telling that hen here comes after. You can put it after, and it's after here. But it does suggest a tinge of antiquity, and, and today it would be more poetic. But it does suggest that this name is older. As for the other bit, Hvaith and Havith. This is this is probably a play on words. It's a joke going on here because Hav. Havith would mean summary, but Hvaith would mean impudent, bold, arrogant. And I think what happened is they intentionally mixed this as a pun to be played out in some kind of performance as this story was told. There was revolving jokes around this character. The impudence of Summer, maybe. The boisterousness of it. He wasn't well liked. However, there were more characters competing for Rhiannon than just Pwyll and Hvaith Hen. You have a guy named Gwaal Vabclid. And he tricks Pwyll, but then Rhiannon helps Pwyll to trick him. And this man is trying to take her hand in marriage from Pwyll. But his name is fascinating for a couple reasons. There's another potential pun here. You have Gwal, which means splendor, radiance, brightness which light itself was very important in times when you didn't have much in the way of light. You can't just flick a switch and have light, can you? The night is dark. But he was the son of someone named Cleed. And this could mean wealth, riches. There's also a kingdom in the north named Cleed. Ustrad Cleed. And there's a moment in here where they mention him going back to his domain for a year, which is a bit of time, and they don't mention where he goes to. And there's kind of an otherly element to him because of his clothing and his wealth. And I think there's a faint suggestion he comes from this northern kingdom, but there's a pun on wealth being related to it as well. We don't know. In any case, he gets thrown in a bag and beaten. Hey, if you're liking this content, hit the like button and I'll go have a glass of wine. The next character, Ternan Torev Chiant. It's quite a mouthful, but he is the foster father of the king's son. And this name is interesting. I want to talk about this for a minute. Ternan? comes from Tern, a lord, a, a monarch, ruler over something. And this has roots in the old British language, or Brythonic, Tigenonos, great lord. So that's what Ternon means. So Turiv is related to Turbe in Latin and originally from Greek, which gives us turbulence, turbulent that intense stirring and commotion, throngs, turif, and chiant 
this you have an older word he which became flow but it used to mean sea in a way or water and he aunt is waters flowing waters so what this name means is the lord the great lord of turbulent waters how old is that i mean that's like that's that sounds really pagan. That sounds ooh like Bronze Age level old. I mean, how, where does that idea, Lord of Turbulent Waters, come from? I like that. Ternon Turbiant. When the sun is born, and between the king and Hrianon. They name him Guri Watherin. Watherin means guach is the word for hair. And erin comes from air, gold, plus that YN ending, meaning something small or singular and male. A, a fair haired boy. And Guri, I'm not quite sure, we're not quite sure, but I think it's related to Gur. A man today that's more in terms used for husband but you can still use it for man now and then but I think guri means becoming a man growing into a man so we have the fair-haired boy growing into a man is his name which this is amusing because his growth rate into manhood is startlingly fast and they make amusement of it and I think guri was there and is intended to be a bit funny. The level of humor and wit in this, in all of these tales, is very sophisticated. And these names are intentionally used for humor. In any case, Guri Wachteren moves back to his kingdom because he was fostered. Keep in mind in this period, sons, especially royals, were fostered in other nearby kingdoms because, well, if you had people all around the household who wanted a bit of a, a stab at the kingship, having someone who's the heir to the throne competing with you in your vicinity, they didn't last very long and fratricide, brotherly killing of brothers was very common. So you sent your young offspring elsewhere to survive. But when he comes back to his kingdom in Devet from Gwent, he is given the name Rideri because there's a bit of confusion about him leaving and coming back and he causes his mother a bit of worry. And the name Rideri means anxiety, stress, worry, caution about something. And that's his name. I mean, I wouldn't name my son Anxiety. But it's quite funny. And Prideri comes to marry a woman named Kigvaverch Gwyn Gohoyu. That's a mouthful. And what does this mean? I'm not sure we understand the first bit because, unless it's intended as an intentional joke, because Kigva means basically slaughterhouse or butchering place. Verch, daughter of. Gwyn Gohoyu, and this Gwyn means usually fair haired or white haired, often fair or white in complexion. Gwyn means white. Gohoyu, sprightly, superbly gay. So he marries slaughtering place, daughter of the fair, white haired, sprightly gay one. Keep in mind Gwyn could also mean fair and just in action. It could mean that. But I hope you get now that these names are very whimsical and amusing, but also very revealing of how the storyteller wanted to convey these people and their journey through the stories to you. If you would like me to make videos about the other three branches on this kind of note about explaining the names, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll see if I can do that for you. Hey. As always, Dioch and Varianam Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.